Green Network Center. As the nation grapples with the effect of COVID-19 on the increase, efforts are being intensified by the federal and state governments to increase capacities of isolation centers for anticipated rise in cases. The expansion of isolation centers will prove useful as plans are underway to increase testing centers for speedy clearance of awaiting cases and more testing in affected communities. These strategies for containment of COVID-19 cannot completely succeed without support of communities to curb the spread through observing safety protocols. This is our focus today on Panorama. I am Muhammad Ibrahim. Last night, the National Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has confirmed 148 new cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria, bringing the total to 2,950. 98 deaths were recorded, while 481 cases were treated and discharged. A breakdown of the number of new cases indicates 43 from Lagos, Kano 32, Zamfara 40, Abuja 10, Katsina 9, and 7 from Taraba. Borno and Ogun states had six cases each, Oyo five, Edo, Kaduna, and Bochi three each, Gombe and Adama one each, while Plateau, Sokoto, and Kebi had one each. The House of Representatives, during plenary on Tuesday, engaged the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 in its bid to get details of current state of affairs of federal government's efforts to contain the ravaging coronavirus disease and the health crisis in Kano. National Assembly correspondent Lamy Ali reports that Ministers of Information, Health, Education, Foreign Affairs, Aviation, Interior, DG, NCDC, National Coordinator and Chairman of the Presidential Task Force took up more than four hours in this session with the lawmakers. The federal government's team in the forefront of the fight against coronavirus fielded questions from House members on the emergency response to the pandemic covering areas such as management of infected persons number and state of isolation centers, capacity of testing, issue of logistics, among others, and efforts to mitigate its impact on economic and social activities. This present crisis has laid bare the fundamental weaknesses in our system of law and policy and left our nation at risk of devastating outcomes on all sides. What is the standard of ventilators per capita? that every nation is supposed to have. How far inwards are we looking with regards to indigenous treatments? Chairman of the PTF, Boss Mustafa, outlined measures put in place by the federal government in the short and long term to effectively tackle the pandemic on all fronts and called for a legislative framework in that direction. For reforming and transforming our healthcare systems, strengthen the legislative framework for economic growth through domestic manufacturing. The Presidential Task Force is working in collaboration with other structures set up by the President to ensure that there is a well-rounded national response. Our experts are participating in the investigation of the unexplained deaths in Kano, and the team shall be reinforced according to needs. In the absence of any vaccine or drugs, for the treatment of COVID-19. The only option right now is what we call the non pharmaceutical intervention, NPI, which is anchored on the use of advocacy and public enlightenment to empower the citizens to protect themselves. In another development, the House has passed a resolution to institute legal action on allegations that it received financial inducement of $10 million from a foreign concern to influence the passage of the Infectious Diseases Control Bill as raised by the Deputy Speaker, Idris Wasi. This is to stem people who will think they will just go to the corridor of uh, the press and make a sports statement against Nigerians. We have our integrity. Both uh, some APC members and some members of opposition came up to say, look, let us don't consider this. It was not on the basis of whether anybody was given any money. This house must take a drastic action to protect the integrity of the leadership whose integrity has now been fingered, and by extension, the integrity of this institution has been put at stake. An ad hoc committee 
has also been set up to investigate the matter. House Speaker Femi Bajabiamila says the bill will be subjected to public hearing, adding that it was conceived in the best interest of Nigerians. In the meantime, the House has resolved to investigate the Niger Delta Development Commission on alleged misapplication and misappropriation of funds. A letter from President Muhammadu Buhari requesting the approval of House members for the sourcing of 850 billion naira loan from domestic capital markets to finance critical projects in the 2020 appropriation bill was read as plenary from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NC News. The alarming rise in number of cases of, of coronavirus pandemic in Borno, barely two weeks since the first confirmed case was recorded. Borno Health Workforce COVID-19 response team has donated preventive kits to Borno state government aimed at assisting containment of the spread of the dread virus in the state. Yagum Subukar has details. Borno Health Workforce COVID-19 response team is an umbrella body comprising members from the National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives Nigerian Medical Association, as well as Medical and Health Workers Union of Nigeria, working as a team to assist government in the fight against coronavirus pandemic in Borno. In view of this, the response team deemed it necessary to contribute their quota by donating some preventive kits to Borno state government, where the Commissioner for Women Affairs, Uwe Regambu, on behalf of the state government, appreciated the gesture, saying the items would no doubt assist in prevention of COVID-19. For them to also deep hand in their pocket at this season of lockdown, to donate items for the protection of uh, the personnel, it's amazing. Chairman, Borno Health Workforce COVID-19 Response Team, Professor Aliu Mohamed Kodia, while highlighting the challenges faced health workers in the front line fighting an invisible enemy said, 20 health personnel are already in isolation, having been tested positive of the virus, hence the need for government to look into plight of reviewing their risk allowances. Let me at this point call for more coordination among the different arms and the pillars of the subcommittee so that we get to where we hope we will go. Similarly, members of Borno Health Workforce COVID-19 response team had, while sympathizing with families of the 20 infected health workers, supported them with some relief items aimed to cushion their hardship while their breadwinners undergo treatment. In a degree, Yagum Subukar, NTA News. As long as people do not accept the reality of the ravaging coronavirus pandemic and imbibe safety protocols to protect themselves and others, it will be difficult to contain the spread of the disease. This formed part of a message on curbing community spread of COVID-19 by the Network for Civil Societies in Borno, supporting the war against the global health challenge. Let's join Paul Nkujevana for the report. Coronavirus pandemic is a health issue affecting human societies, requiring all hands on deck to stop it in its tracks. The civil society organization in Borno State that has been in the front of promoting peace and humanitarian activities in the post-insurgency recovery is now engaged in the COVID-19 containment. With me is the chairman of the civil society organization in Borno State, Ambassador Ahmed Shehu. Sir, as a representative of all segments of the society, what is the civil society organization role or engagement in supporting the containment of coronavirus pandemic in the states? The issue of the virus is all about the community. So we thought about what we call the civil society situation room. And the essence of the civil society situation room, the objective is to ensure that we bring the voice of the people into the situation. And we also provide the opportunity to the people in order that when there is a situation in the community, they can reach out to us. And we have received over 300 calls and we have referred about 17 cases. So we are at the, uh, at the top of the situation. We are feeding information, we are getting, getting information from the community members. When there are sick persons from the community, they tell us and now we link them with the rapid response squad of the government. So based on your assessment, are people really following the protocols of social distancing, hygiene practices and other measures put in place by Borno State government to contain this pandemic? Yeah. Uh, the 
maybe the sensitization we did in the communities has really helped. Him. It's difficult for you to have 100% compliance. So right now what we are working on is toward ensuring that we sensitize the people to accept. Because you have some elite that are well educated up to now denying that this issue does not exist. It exists. The only thing we can urge people to do that is to, do, to discipline themselves, to make sacrifice, to stay at home, to exercise the social distance, as we said, and to ensure that we exercise almost sense of hygiene so that to ensure that it's not about protecting ourselves but protecting the larger humanity. Community, no doubt, has essential role in supporting government and health workers in preventing COVID-19 holding sway. Let's recognize the reality on ground. Follow laid down rules for your safety and others. It's back to studio with Mohammed Ibrahim. Thank you, Pauline. While efforts are being stepped up to contain spread of COVID-19, confirmed cases continue to rise in Borno and other parts of the country, putting pressure on isolation and treatment centers and further exposing health workers to risk of contracting the coronavirus pandemic. Corbin community spread remains a major strategy in containment through a robust and efficient contact tracing and speedy testing of suspected cases, especially with the anticipated move by state governments to provide testing facilities to complement existing NCDC laboratories. With me to discuss the situation at hand in Borno and efforts to scale up testing, isolation and treatment is the Borno State Commissioner of Health, Dr. Salu Ailu Kwayabura. You're welcome to Panorama. My pleasure. Thank you for having me this afternoon. Uh, let's start by asking, where are we in terms of uh, provision of additional testing facilities to speed up getting COVID-19 off the streets, which is a major step in containment? Well, thank you very much. Uh, you may recall that uh, about two weeks ago, precisely, the NCDC activated the molecular laboratory here in uh, the University of Medical Education Hospital to scale up the testing for COVID-19. Uh, that facility has been on board and has been doing its best to reach out to uh, the rising number of cases and they need to do more tests. However, the State Ministry of Health and the High Power Committee on uh, COVID-19 in Borno State uh, has seen the need to further upscale this. So in line with that, uh, we are looking at uh, setting up a molecular lab at the Umarushio Ultra Modern Hospital. Uh, work has already gone far because we have part of uh, the safety measures that are there uh, and the equipment, particularly the real-time uh, PCR machine, the automated uh, gene extraction equipment, as well as the test kits, have been ordered for already. And the remodeling of the center is ongoing and has reached more than 65% as at the last time I saw yesterday. Uh, let me at this point just say that it is only a laboratory where samples will be received from individuals and suspected cases mm -hmm. from far across the state and beyond the state and brought in there. I need to make this very important clarification because already we hear people talking about uh, Umaru Show Ultra Modern Hospital being turned into a Corona Hospital. That is absolutely not true. Okay. The hospital will continue to provide services that he has continued to do in the past. It's okay. only a laboratory that will be situated in there to help in this whole fight. Okay, then what is the current situation in Borno regarding uh, contact tracing and testing of suspected cases, both within the state capital and local governments where COVID-19 cases were confirmed? Uh, as you have uh, said in the beginning, Borno State now has about 106 uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19. Uh, of these 106, uh, we lost about 14. Uh, the, I mean, two have been discharged from the facility. The rest are doing very well, and I think in a couple of days we'll also discharge those ones. However, may I clearly say that uh, of this total number, uh, we've been able to identify a total of three uh, or four now from uh, DIKWA, okay. a total of three from Goza local government, particularly in Pulka specifically. We've also been able to identify two from Dambua, one from Bayou, uh, two. I mean, five from BU, mm -hmm. and then the rest are here in MMC Jerry. Now, what we have done in terms of contact tracing and scaling up services is that uh, from the inception, when we had uh, very few cases, we worked hard to ensure that every local government area has a rapid response team. 
which is composed of about five individuals, including the local government disease surveillance officer, supported by the WHO, uh, the primary health care coordinator, and others. These are the people that go out to do contact tracing and surveillance for each of the local government areas. They work hand in hand with the local government uh, COVID-19 committees. Now, because of the rising cases and the need to refocus in some of these areas, we've had to increase the number of surveillance teams, particularly in the local government area and mm -hmm. Medigree Jerry. As we speak, MMC Jerry now have a total of 25 rapid response teams that go out every day, whereas 20 are on disease surveillance, uh, five are actually out there on contact tracing and responding to alerts. Yeah. Uh, we're also reviewing the situation to see what we're going to do to increase the number further. But very importantly for us to be able to ease the kind of work we do, we've also been able to profile this and put them on a map so that we're able to, uh, word by word, tell the total number of cases in the world. As it is, the highest number of patients are actually coming from Mesandari Ward mm. in the MMC and also around Gozari Ward in Jiri. Mm. Uh, and we have sent out uh, more detailed tracking uh, mechanisms using the ODK phone so that we have a real-time uh, situation and report in those people. Uh, additionally, our teams not only go out now to do contact tracing, but they also go out to educate the people in conjunction with the blamers in the area mm. to get the people to understand the need for social distancing, for the use of masks, and hand washing amongst others mm -hmm. and they go further to make sure that in all the households visited and the area is visited the government has produced over 100,000 face mask of cloth type and have been distributed to the people by, by the contact tracing and a special team including our collaboration with the civil society organizations and this have been distributed so this is part of what we are doing in terms of contact tracing and making sure that we reach out to every individual that is probably at risk or suspected to have COVID-19 disease in Bono State. Interesting. What are efforts in place to expand or provide more isolation facilities across the state and do you have a timeline? Uh, well, yeah, you may recall that the State Isolation Center is actually a 100 bedded facility augmented by the 36 bedded facility in the University of Medical Teaching Hospital. Now that we've reached the 100 mark and beyond, mm. uh, it's pertinent that we begin to have more isolation centers. Okay. The COVID-19 committee had worked proactively to look at possible sites for the uh, establishment of these isolation centers. One is already uh, in place and has reached advanced stage. That is uh, the uh, designated NYC orientation camp. The new NYC operation and orientation camp on Baga Road at the four okay. Biwak uh, Motors. Uh, the equipment and beddings are already put in place and uh, we round you know, and we hope that in the next one week at most, mm -hmm. that place will be ready to begin to receive patients. Also, uh, We've looked at expanding the isolation centers and decentralizing away from uh, Medjugorje, Jiri. And uh, I'm glad to report that through community efforts, the people of Biu, uh, Town and Biu local government generally have come up to construct a 30 bedded isolation center uh, within Biu. It's now reached a roofing stage, and we believe that in the next one week, that mm -hmm. one will also be ready. A complement of equipment that are already available in these stores have been deployed to support that facility. All right, good. Uh, then lastly, what is the state of those undergoing treatment, including health workers infected in the line of duty, as we are yet to have any discharge out of the over 100 cases recorded? Uh, well, thank you. I think there's been a lag in terms of update, but I must say that uh, first and foremost, I don my heart and I throw a very big salute on behalf of the committee mm. and the government of Bono State, particularly frontline health workers who have gotten infected. I want them to know that uh, our heart goes out to them. They have our warm thoughts and we have them in our mind. And we believe that our prayers will see them through and they're helping to build resilience. Uh, going further, may I state that uh, so far from the outbreak, mm. uh, two people have tested negative from the follow-up and they have been discharged from the isolation center. Uh, and we will update that as is appropriate as soon as possible. However, may I also state that of all the people that are now infected in the isolation center, they are all in critical, I mean, they are all in very stable condition. Uh, most of them have no symptoms and a few of them only have mild symptoms. None have moderate to severe symptoms that require critical care management. Therefore, there is no patient in the uh, 
intensive care unit, nor on the ventilators within uh, any of the uh, isolation centers. Okay. Uh, Dr. Salu Ali Kwayabara, Bono State Commissioner for Health, thank you for coming on Panorama. It's my pleasure. Thank All you. Right. We now take a break. More stories when we return. to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss, and we share your grief. Welcome back. Borno State Judiciary has for the first time adopted an online court sitting using virtual courtroom to deliver judgment on a pending case of culpable homicide in Medjugorje, the state capital. The state chief judge, Justice Kashim Zanna, monitored the court proceeding online held at different locations when the lockdown was relaxed. The report. This is the first online court sitting in Nigeria by the Borno State High Court No. 13, Meiduguri, featuring virtual courtroom. The significance of adopting a virtual courtroom is not unconnected to the preventive measures against coronavirus pandemic, which led to an extension of court's closure by another two weeks. Borno State Judiciary had directed continuation of trial in criminal cases up to judgment to ensure justice is not denied in the face of nationwide lockdown and calls for prison decongestion. Our aim has never been just because of COVID. Even under normal circumstances, the old normal, still there is no need to delay cases because of just simply somebody appearing in the court to open his mouth to talk. That he can do from anywhere in the world. The state chief judge, while monitoring the court sitting online, says more cases will follow suit as this one involving the state versus Ali Muhammad found the accused not guilty of the offence of culpable murder, hence was discharged and acquitted by Justice Fadao Umaru presiding. Now that COVID has brought that reality, we are hopeful that these changes will now come fast and we will show you more that we can do. We can end up making it a rule even that there is, we will not allow, just for the sake of coming, to talk. We will not even allow anybody to come. You have to do it online. The online or virtual court sitting is made possible using a software application for meetings or teleconferencing redesigned to fit a court proceeding. The Borno State Judiciary says the COVID-19 pandemic has not taken them by surprise as they are fully equipped for the dispensation of justice without delay. In other news, Ramadan fasting is progressing significantly with the Muslim community in Borno observing the holy month in the midst of coronavirus pandemic that led to a total lockdown. Jadwa John Jassini in this report sought to find out the situation in Medjugorje, the Borno state capital, with the high temperatures, the fear of COVID-19 spreading, and the lockdown affecting the socio-economic well-being of all. Government at all levels directed imposition of lockdown order in almost all states of the Federation to curtail the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. This has distinguished this year's Ramadan from those of previous years as residents are confined to the four corners of their homes. The peak of the heat season has further made conditions in the environment unfavorable for an easy fasting. Already, the COVID-19 lockdown and efforts towards containment of spread has taken its toll on congregational religious worship, Ramadan tafsir and tarawih prayers, in addition to social cultural activities by teenagers in the course of the fasting. NTA camera lens captured residents taking solars under shades in their various neighborhoods with minimum observance of social distancing as directed by experts to avoid the hot weather. Some Muslim faithful who spoke to NTA news narrated their ordeals in this year's Ramadan fast noting of some challenges to include the effect of the lockdown on livelihoods and means of survival, coupled with the unfriendly weather. Borno is one of the hottest states. Compared to other places, this place is not easy to stay indoors. 
it's very, very, very uh, hard for us to bear it. But some actions we are trying our best. To me, there is light at the end of the tunnel. That place is very painful for the citizens to be staying at home in this lockdown and then facing this challenge also. This lockdown has caused a lot of challenge. Like, you know, four people have to go out to make their daily visits. This time around, you know, people have been lucky down, they have nowhere to go, you know, and, you know, this is something different from the usual one. They are, however, optimistic that with prayers and adherence to the health tips towards curtailing the spread of the pandemic, there is hope for a new dawn. Muslim faithfuls have been urged to sustain their faith through observing the Ramadan fast in the confines of their homes while adhering to the lockdown order put in place by government to curb the spreading coronavirus pandemic. In Maiduguri, Jetwa John Jesini, NTA News. This is all we can take on Panorama this afternoon. Do have a nice day. Thank <laughs> you.